Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore. This is Faith School. We welcome you to Faith School. It's the place where our spirit gets fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. These are things you're not just born knowing. Uh, we do need to be taught. Our, our spirit and our faith needs to be fed. Not just anything, not just people's theories and opinions, but anointed uh, Word of God. Jesus said man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we want you to, uh, by faith, just come in and join us. We saved you a seat right here on the front row. Get your Bible, get something to take notes, and come right on in. We're going to pray and release faith that you, that we, hear from Him today exactly what we need. And that Word will quicken us. He said, the words I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're life. So let's believe for those words right now. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us, the faith school class, all over the world, we agree together as touching this, asking you for anointed utterance, asking you for the enlightening of our eyes and heart and mind and the feeding of our, our faith and our spirit and the quickening of our entire being, touching our mind, our emotions, our body, our life. We ask for it in Jesus' name and we purpose not to be hearers only, but to be doers of what you show us. And as surely as we walk in the light of what you reveal and give to us, you will Watch over those words and you'll perform them in our, and confirm them in our lives and great and good things will take place. And we'll give you the glory and tell everybody that sees it that you did it and give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would join me again today in our great textbook, uh, the Bible in Hebrews chapter 10. And let's continue with our study we're calling by faith. Hebrews 10 and 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. Now, that's, that's not just something you do on Sunday. Live by faith, right? That's how, how you live. That's day in, day out, 24-7, everywhere you are, all the time. And it's, it's really great to learn this, that no matter what comes up, you already know how to deal with it. No matter what comes up, you already know the perfect response. What? Believe God. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> well, someone said, that's, that's just sounds like a pat answer. Well, it, it can be, but it, it doesn't have to be. It should be a living reality. What do you mean? Boom, you got a great big bill showed up that you weren't expecting. What do you do? Well, you can lose your joy, you can get upset, you can gripe about it all day. Wrong choice, <laughs> right? <laughs> the, didn't say the just shall live by moping and crying <laughs> and griping, right? Uh, but there's something else you could do. You, you could open it up, you could see it, and your eyes get big <laughs> and realize, I got to get a hold of myself right now, right? I got to get a, I, it's a choice. What am I going to do? I walk by faith, not by sight. Not by what I'm looking at right here. I'm not going to let this control my thinking and my emotions. I open it up. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm making a choice. I should immediately start thinking about what the Lord has told me. Right? What did he tell me about my needs? Hmm? Did he tell me he had supply? Yes. All my needs. What did he tell me? Am I a giver? Have I been giving and sowing? What did he tell me about that? It'd come back to me. Is that right? Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken again. Running over. Men would give unto my bosom. Is this a surprise to God? No. No, right? He already knew how he's going to supply my need before I found out I had a need. Right? And what we're talking about now is faith. Instead of being fixated on this big bill, I, my focus is going to Him. I'm saying, well, Lord, this didn't surprise you. <laughs> and so uh, 
uh, right now. And if you're married, it's, it's great to uh, join hands with your spouse. Or uh, if it, it affects you and a business partner or whoever you might be involved in, get them involved. The Bible said if any two of you shall agree is touching anything they ask, it'd be done for them. Uh, Phyllis, my wife and I, we do this all the time. We go, okay, we need this, I guess. So grab hands. Father, you said that if any two of us would agree is touching anything, we'd ask you to do it for us. You're faithful. You've met our needs over and over and over again. This amount, this is nothing to you. So we claim more than this coming in. You know, let me give you a little tip. Don't just always claim the exact amount. <laughs> claim, claim some extra. <laughs> yeah. Claim. Uh, down in Louisiana, they say lanyap. <laughs> Put, put some lanyap on it, right? That's some extra, right? right. And, and you, you'll figure out what to do with it. Uh, Lord, we, we claim more than enough. We claim this and some extra coming in. And you get in faith about it. And faith, as we see here in just a few moments, it is the confidence of things expected. So I'm expecting now the money to come in to pay the bill. I, I don't see it. But my faith is the, the conviction and proof of what I don't see. Come on, this is how faith works. And so if I'm really confident that God's heard my prayer, I'm doing what I need to do, I can count on Him to do what I can't do, then why do I need to be upset and depressed over this bill? Right? If I'm in faith, I won't be. And the joy, I can go ahead and start giving thanks. Thank you, Lord, right, for, for helping me pay. You've done it a thousand times before, 10,000 times before. Just start thanking God. The bills um, will be paid and more than enough. Can you say amen? amen. You know, I perceive that uh, a number of people are right there. <laughs> Maybe you opened up a big bill <laughs> recently or whatever the case, maybe it's something that's been hanging around you for months or, or longer than that, it doesn't matter what it is. It is God's will that you have everything paid off and caught up and even have extra. He is the God of more than enough. Do you remember what Jesus said in John 10.10? 10? He said, the thief doesn't come unless he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I am come that you might have, the Amplified says, have and enjoy life to the full until it overflows. This rake by, scrape by, run short, not have enough, can't pay your bills is not the will of God, my friend. It is not. But you do have to show Him some faith and you do have to obey Him. So um, you, you're in a, in a great place today because the whole faith class, not just these guys here, there's a bunch of people in faith class. The whole faith class is going to join faith with you to get your bills paid today. Oh, somebody say glory to God. <laughs> Are you ready? Now I want you to release faith with me just like I, I, I believe the Lord's leading us to do it. Say it out loud. Father God. Father God. You are, my you are my source. There are many channels, are many channels. but only one source. only one source. You're my source. You're my source. You, are you are the ocean that never runs dry. Never runs dry. You, are you are the abundant supply, supply. And, good and good shepherd who meets all my needs, all my needs. According, to according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I claim, I claim out, of world, out of this world more than enough, more than enough. Money, money, resources, resources things, things, help, help favor, favor, more than enough, more than enough to, take care, to take care, pay off these bills, pay off these, bills, pay off these, debts, pay off these debts, fulfill my obligations, fulfill my obligations and requirements. I claim enough, I claim enough and, more and more besides, extra, extra coming, in now coming in now and quickly. And quickly. Satan, Satan, take your hands off my money. I forbid you to hinder and work against it. I bind you up. I shut you down in Jesus' name. Ministering spirits, 
Go. Go. Influence. Influence. Work. Work. Cause it to come to me. Quickly. Quickly. Easily. Easily. Abundantly. Abundantly. In Jesus name. name. I believe I receive it. I believe I receive it. In Jesus name. name. And I thank you for it. Thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. (laughs) Praise God. Well, class, you in faith with them? Yes. Yeah, and I believe there are thousands and thousands and more besides that are joining you. Uh, there, there is power and there is uh, strength and stability in agreement and confirmation. Now, every time you think about that bill or that need or anything reminds you of it, don't let panic or fear grip you. you it's a choice. I walk by faith, not by sight. You push that aside and you say, uh-uh. All of my needs. The Lord heard my prayer. And you just start thanking him. You just start thanking God for not just enough, but more than enough. And if your spouse or friend or anybody asks, you reckon we'll have enough to do that? You reckon we'll get it? You go, no, no. We'll have more than enough. (laughs) More than, not just enough. We will have more than enough. And you know how you can tell when you really get in faith? You stop being depressed. That's right. huh? You stop being scared and you have joy and you have peace. You're excited in anticipation and expectation. And again, that's what faith is. Faith is the substance or the confidence of things hoped for, expected. You expect in that money, it excites you. You don't know. One of the things is you don't know how it's going to come. <laughs> right? Right? But you know, God has, I started to say a million and one, but it's a lot more than that, right? Ways he can do it, and he'll do it in a way that'll surprise you over and over again. So just keep on thanking him, brother. Just keep on thanking him, sister, and watch and and see what he does for you. And as he does, be sure and give that testimony. Tell people what the Lord did for you. We're in Hebrews 10. Let's continue reading in verse 38. He said, the just will live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Did you notice just now we didn't draw back? We stepped up. Is that right? We stepped up. We laid hold. We weren't quiet and mousy about it. Right? We were bold and spoke up and and laid hold. He said, uh, we're not of them who draw back to perdition and loss and destruction. We're of them that believe to the saving of the soul, and we are believers. He said, now faith is the substance or confidence of things hoped for, the evidence or conviction of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. And so in our previous studies, we saw how that by faith, the worlds God framed and made the worlds. By faith, Abel offered his more excellent sacrifice. By faith, Enoch walked with God. And wound up getting translated. In verse 6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There is no way, no how, to please God in anything unless we do it in faith. And the two big keys to doing it in faith is that you come to God believing He is real, He exists, He is God, He knows all the answers, and He has all the resources, but you don't stop there. You go on to the next part, you must believe it pays off to seek Him. It pays off to believe Him. You will get results when you do. Now, in the very next verse, it says, by faith, Noah. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, a reference back to verse uh, 1, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. What does, what does faith mean? Real faith look like and sound like. Now, one of the reasons we're having faith school is because there's so much ignorance about real faith. I don't claim that I know everything about it, but just in my 
Well, I guess we're pushing now uh, 40 years in the next few years of uh, learning about these things and preaching and teaching on them. Um, just in these few years, I see more and more men and women, believers, churchgoers, calling things faith that is not faith. It's not real faith. And the scriptures in Timothy talked about unfeigned faith. Why would you need to use that descriptor? Unfeigned, we'd say it like this, not pretend faith. If there's a not pretend faith, what also must there be? A pretend faith. There is that which people call faith, and to the unlearned looks and sounds like faith, but it's not. And we've already talked about, in James, dead faith. So there are these whole realms of you could be doing things and calling it faith, and it's dead faith. Get no results. You could be doing things and calling it faith and it's pretend faith. So we do really need to find out what real faith is, right? Real faith. So when you hear somebody say, oh, you know, I, I stood and believed God and it didn't work. And so I, I know somebody and they believed God with all their heart and, and it didn't work. I say to you boldly, no, you don't know anybody like that. And you never have met anybody like that because that implies somebody genuinely trusted God and he let them down. Has never happened and never will. There has been a lot of cases where people called something faith and it was not faith. It can, uh, there are cases where people are just presumptuous and they call it faith. And, uh, you know, there's a, when God delivered the uh, children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage and um, he told them to go into the promised land and they, they wouldn't go. They cried and felt sorry for themselves and they said, there's no way, there's no way. These giants, these walled cities, uh, we're like grasshoppers. They'll just consume us and destroy us. And so the Lord said, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, putting a bunch of it together real quick. Uh, he said, okay, you don't want to do that? Turn around, go back into the wilderness and, and think about it for a while. You know? So uh, after that, uh, when they came to uh, another place, uh, they said, okay, we, we're ready to go now. We'll go up and fight these guys. And Moses said, no, uh-uh. Don't go up. The Lord told you, no, now you go to the wilderness. They said, oh, no, no, we're ready to believe now. We're going to do it. And, and so they went up and they got defeated. Now, now notice this. They were saying, uh, we're going to believe God and we're going to fight and we're going to win. That sounds good, right? That sounds like faith. What's the problem? The Lord told you don't go, right? The Lord told you go to the wilderness. Hmm? And, and that was an issue with them over and over. He said, go in the promised land. They said, no, we're not going. He said, go to the wilderness. They said, no, we're ready to go now. <laughs> then he, the, the manna came and he said, uh, you know, pick it up. And, and, and then on the Sabbath, he said, don't go out. So they went out and, and save it. And they, they wouldn't save it. Don't save it. They saved it. I'm, Contrary. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading that one time and, and, and just kept seeing it over and over. I said, Lord, what's wrong with these people? He said, they're a lot like y'all. <laughs> I thought, no, no, no. And then I read in 1 Corinthians, it said, these things are written as examples mm -hmm. for us. We're to learn some things that we learn from and do, like faith, like Noah. Other things, like what happened with the unbelieving Israelites, don't do that. Amen. They're examples of what to do and what not to do. So uh, we need to learn the difference between real faith and phony faith and dead faith. Well, here, the, every one of these examples you know are not dead faith, and they are not phony faith. This is the real article, which is why we, ought to, which is why we're, we are doing this in faith school. We're camping out in chapter 11, right? And we're just taking our time and going verse by verse and seeing what we can glean out of this, and the Spirit of God's helping us. We know Abel had real faith. We saw it in his giving. We know Enoch had real faith. We saw it in his uh, communion with God. You know, that's how people say, I, I want to be, be closer to God, and I want God to be more real to me. It's entirely up to you. <laughs> this is something you initiate. 
Remember what the scripture said, draw near to him. And what? He'll draw near or close to you. What happens first? People say, a lot of people waiting on God. Waiting on God. Oh God, you know, uh, show me, you know. No, by faith, you draw near to him like Enoch did. You just start talking to him like you believe he's real. Because he is. You just start talking to him like you believe he's good. Because he is. Is that right? And the more faith you put into it, next thing you know, you'll sense his presence. You'll sense his presence stronger than you used to. And it wasn't him that changed. (laughs) It was you that began to talk to him in more faith instead of just empty ritual. You know, the Lord warned us about praying vain repetitions. Just praying the same prayer over and over ritualistically. Why? There's no faith in that. And the Lord wouldn't be pleased with that. But when you, uh, when you just, so simple, you just say, Father, I know you see me. (laughs) I know you hear me. You know everything in my heart before I open my mouth. But I love you. I believe in you. And When you say it with sincerity and faith that God is closer than your breath, you'll immediately begin to sense his presence. Because by faith, everybody say by faith, by by faith you are drawing close to him. You can be as close to him as you want to be. You can be way closer than you are today. You can be as close to him. I'm talking about in fellowship. He, he lives inside you. You can't get much closer than that. <laughs> but I'm talking about in your experience of fellowship, you can be closer. And so he's ready. And, and people say, well, you know, God, when are you going to move? He's already moved. He moved in redemption. He moved in revealing himself. And so it really is more up to us how close we want to be. So Enoch found that out. And by faith, even back before the law was given, before any of this, he just did it by faith and got so close to God, he was taken out of here. And then we see Noah experiencing amazing things, different for him and his family than anybody in the whole planet. Now, God doesn't play favorites, but he does favor faith. Does that make sense or not? Uh, He's not going to treat you differently or special because of who your folks are or where you were born or how you look or anything like that. Not at all. But if this one will believe God and this one won't, he is going to manifest for this one in ways that he does not for this one. And so could you say that God wanted everybody on the planet to perish in the flood? That that was his perfect will? Well, that's to say the reason why it happened was his will. And the reason why it happened was evil. The Bible said the earth was filled with violence. That's not God. That doesn't please him. He's not pleased with that. And so he had Noah preach on what's right for decade after decade. But still, people wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't listen. But Noah got ready. Said out loud, faith prepares. Faith, prepares. faith gets ready. Faith gets ready. I ask my wife Phyllis oftentimes, I mean, it's usually not very many days go by. I'll say to her, I'll say, what are we excited about? <laughs> what are we excited about? And right along with that, what are we getting ready for? What are we preparing for? If you're not excited about anything, you're not in faith. I don't care what you say. Because faith produces expectation of good and great things. Faith is the confidence of your expectation, your hope. And if I'm expecting great things, I'm not blasé about it. I'm not, okay, whatever. No, if great things are in the works, you're like, Yay, right? You, you are, you're, you're expectant. And if you really believe it's happening, you will prepare. 
you will take active steps towards making that happen, towards seeing that come to pass. I can look back over our ministry and I see thing after thing after thing after thing, miracles that the Lord did that were on the heels, you might say, of us getting ready for it. There's been a number of things that uh, I thought I was waiting on the Lord. I thought I was waiting on the Lord. Thought I was wait- and finally he dealt with me. If it came in today, where would you put it? What would you do with it? Are you ready for it? And I thought, no. <laughs> so how much faith am I in that I'm not even ready? You know, oh, Lord, I, Lord, you know, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? And, and he was, you know, saying like, okay, if it showed up today, what are you doing? What's next? And I realized I'm not ready. I'm not ready. If I really believed this, what would I do? I would get ready. I would start doing the things. Uh, you know, if you're believing for those new clothes, you need to make room in the closet for it. Right. Is that right? And that could be by taking something, not the junk you're going to throw away, but taking your good clothes and sewing them. Yes. Come on, are y'all ready? Yes. Maybe you need a new iron so that you don't get anything on the new clothes. New ironing board. Maybe you, you, you get ready. Whatever you can do. If you're, you know, Believe in God for a, a new car, the same thing. Get ready. Get the spot in the garage ready for it. You know, clean it up and, and get the one you got. If you, maybe you're going to trade it in or you're going to sew it. You've got to get it ready to go. There are acts and steps you can do to prepare and get ready. Sometimes people say, well, I'm, I'm believing for that spouse. Okay, well, if Mr. Wright or Miss Wonderful showed up today, are you ready? <laughs> are, are you ready financially? Are you ready physically? Are you ready mentally and emotionally? It may be a blessing they hadn't showed up yet, right? You better get yourself ready. And when you are actively making effort and doing things to get ready, that act of faith, the power of God will respond to and manifest to. That's when you see the power of God when you step out in faith towards it. Can you say amen? Well, that's it again for our time in faith school. I uh, believe you've been built up and come back next time. We're going to learn a whole lot more about living and walking by faith.